Geeks Assemble! Geeks of the Week! Steph, I debated doing a Captain America review because your song said it all. I want to take it and make a parody video, so I'll be standing naked with a metal sleeve. But then I thought, we'd probably lose all our viewers that way, and that's bad. Lulu couldn't be here because of technical difficulties, but I'm going to read one of my favorite tweets from her from the week. Do I want to spend $60 on an awesome Killer Killer shirt? This is the real question. Okay, one of Lulu's friends posted this awesome link to these great shirts, some of them being Kill the Kill, and I want them all now too. They're kind of pricey, so I'm mad at her and her friend because I'm going to be broke soon because of it. Nikki, thank you for not playing that cruel joke because last week was emotionally trying for me, and you fake leaving the channel would have probably sent me over the edge, so thank you. Oh, and that Lucy trailer looks wicked awesome. I want Scarlett Johansson in all the things. Also, public service announcement to everybody, she does not like the nickname Scarlet Joe, so don't call her that. She also doesn't like her other nickname, Chessie McCott Voice. I stole that joke from Conan O'Brien. No regrets. This is going to be my spoiler-free review of Captain America the Winter Soldier. Ha! Oh! Mmm. Damn it. After the Avengers, we find Captain still adjusting to the world around him, because after all, he was a meat popsicle for a long time. He works for S.H.I.E.L.D. when some secret of shady shit goes down. And that's all I can say because again, no spoilers. The plot was fantastic. There was intrigue and mystery. It was part spy story, part action movie. There was a lot of elements from the first Captain movie, so there was a big payoff there. And a lot of nods to comic book fans, especially on who Winter Soldier is. At times it felt like a buddy flick because Black Widow got a lot of screen time. And I'm not complaining, more Scarlett Johansson please. Then you added the Falcon, and a new bromance was born. Boom. Chris Evans is embodying the role of Steve Rogers. He is killing it. I view the lines he delivered differently than Nikki did. Like, Captain isn't witty with the quick responses. He has a dry sense of humor. So I don't think he was trying to be something he's not. He was just getting in a funny line here and there. After all, this is a guy from a different era with a strong moral core who inspires people to be better. And that can easily come off as, or be viewed as, hokey, but Evans is just pulling it off. To me, Winter Soldier might be the best of the solo Marvel movies. The only one that comes close to it is the first Iron Man. So judging the singular franchises, it goes Captain America, Thor, then Iron Man. Iron Man 2 and 3 weren't awful, but they were considerably weak, especially when you compare it to the first one. Those movies should have been called Robert Downey Jr. earns his paycheck by carrying these films. Both Thors are about on equal footing, strong, entertaining. Winter Soldier was better than the first Cap movie. The story interconnects fucking brilliantly. Seriously, a great film. It might be my favorite of the year. You should all go see it. Go see it again. Take a date. She can drool over Chris Evans. You could drool over Scarlett Johansson. It's the perfect movie. While I'm on the topic of the Marvel Universe, did you guys see this week's episode of S.H.I.E.L.D.? It was so good! It actually tied into the movie. There was some heart-wrenching twists. It should have come with a spoiler warning, though. Guys, don't see this week's episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. unless you see the Winter Soldier first, because there will be spoilers. I know two wrestling moves, the headlock and the sandwich lock. WrestleMania 30 just passed, and of course, being a big-time wrestling fan, I'm going to have to review it. So here are my thoughts on the Showcase of the Immortals. Why doesn't Daniel Bryan get a fancy entrance? He could be maybe riding the goat, or, 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 there could be a bunch of goats lined up, then he could go running into the ring. This was a solid match as expected. Daniel Bryan is an A plus player. I know I'm critical of Triple H, but he will show up and give you what he's got. The build up to this match was great. You know, finally, Brian got his ass on Triple H and got his revenge. This wasn't even a match. This was a S.H.I.E.L.D. beatdown. Nothing you haven't seen on Raw or SmackDown. I'm only disappointed because they should have given the S.H.I.E.L.D. better opponents. They should have saved that match with the Wyatts for Mania. This wasn't bad. It had its moments. 
Kofi, who of course you always need to watch out in these things. Fandango was kind of funny, and I am happy that the King of Swing won. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in I really dug this match. When it comes to in-ring psychology, Bray Wyatt is the best. That's what told the story here. And I don't mind that John Cena won because this rivalry isn't over and it was a high-profile match for Bray. Whoa! What just happened? Anyone who told you they saw this coming is a damn liar. When Lesnar hit that third at five and got the pinfall, there was a stunned gasp from the crowd. They couldn't believe what they just saw. Their facial reactions told the whole story. And then Undertaker's long walk up the aisle was the saddest thing ever. The match itself was okay. It was nothing special. It shouldn't have been the match that beat the streak. It should have either been one of the Shawn Michaels matches, the Triple H Hell in the Cell match for the brutality, or the CM Punk match. But not this one, man. No. You will remember where you were when you first heard your Undertaker's streak was beaten. It's the end of an era. And thank you, Undertaker. Oh, by the way, they interviewed the guy, the one with the glasses, who they made the meme of. You know who I'm talking about. And he wasn't even rooting for The Undertaker. Bastardo. These aren't all the divas. Where is Santina Morella? In the beginning, there were a lot of botched moves. But once they started to focus on Fury divas, it got better. There were some cool moments, like the Bellas diving, Tamina and that exchange. Emma was awesome. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be, and that's something. It's Daniel Bryan versus the world! Yes! I, wait, I stole that from AJ? Who stole that from Scott Pilgrim? Okay, as long as we know who's stealing from him. First, I'd like to say I've been very hard on Batista, you know, but I like him better as a heel. He's cooler and a lot more funnier. With that out the way, triple threat matches can be a gamble, but this one was fantastic. Randy, Batista, Daniel, they all delivered. The crowd was into it. And finally, we got what we wanted. Daniel won, and he absolutely deserved it. Overall, I give WrestleMania a C plus, B minus. There were only a few quality matches. The production values were amazing, especially with the band entrances. That was really cool. Hogan, Austin, and The Rock coming out. That was a great moment. And Bryan finally being put over as champion was definitely worth the wait, we've been waiting for this for months, and the payoff was big. Ironically, it started to be tradition that the night after Mania is usually better, and it was. Raw was flipping awesome. Congrats to Paige for finally being called up. It was definitely an interesting week to be a wrestling fan. Sadly, there's no time for comic book reviews, but pick up Batman Eternal, all new Ghost Rider, or Superior Force of Spider-Man if you're looking for an excellent read. So that's it for me. Remember to subscribe to us, like us on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, check out the other more awesome geeks, and fairly well. I've done like 20 takes. This is harder to use than it looks.